Hey everyone, I'm back again. Uh, once again, this is my uh, sixth, video, sixth video, I believe. Um, we're uh, here in Canada. We're uh, at the very, for the very last day before the uh, national election, so I'm pretty caught up with reading with my reading at the moment. So uh, videos will likely not be made quite as quickly, and I'm looking forward to seeing the results tomorrow. Now, that aside, I'm sure that's not important to uh, quite a few of us, but. You know, me and Sean Carlton Zero uh, have been looking into this, so. Alright, I'm not really sure what I want to title this video yet, guys. But, and, and gals, hopefully. Uh, but, I think we, most of us here uh, on the internet, really, the, you know, the internet wrestling community, are well aware that the All Japan Pro Wrestling 1990s King's Road era is almost always the measuring stick of you know, wrestling excellence, wrestling greatness, and for, you know, for a damn good reason, some of the most intense, uh, most brutal, stiff performances have certainly come out of All Japan Pro Wrestling in the 1990s. And there's a lot of prominence that's given to, you know, what a lot of us call the Big Five, or the Big Four, or what some people even <laughs> call the Four Corners of Heaven. Uh, j just silly. Um... You know, the, the, these five individuals being more or less, you know, the workhorses. That's kind of unfair to say, really. There's a lot of hard workers in All Japan Pro Wrestling during the 1990s and beyond. But these five are usually regarded um, as, you know, the five thoroughbreds of the All Japan Pro Wrestling 1990 scene. These, these individuals, of course, are Misawa Mitsuharu, Kobashi Kenta, Taoe Akira, Kawala Toshiaki, sorry guys, Akiyama Jun, and Akiyama Jun, um, pardon me, it was a long night, <laughs> um, uh, we're all, majority of us are all very much aware of that, um, I just kind of wanted to, uh, sort of throw a challenge out there to everyone, um, there's, uh, there's obviously a historic, you know, sort of paradigm, sort of Pepsi Coke battle between New Japan Pro Wrestling and All Japan Pro Wrestling, there's always that, uh, struggle, the, uh, you know, the the two colliding forces, the irresistible force and the immovable object kind of conflict. And uh, I'd really like uh, to see some video responses to this. I think it'd be pretty fun. I'd like uh, to see some people post, uh, even if it's like, you know, one, two minutes, whatever. Oh, or even in the comment box, just uh, leave, um, leave in what, in your opinion, is the 1990s uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling Big Five. Um... I think this is. I think this will be a little fun. I think New Japan Pro Wrestling does not. Uh, this is a really ironic. I know because they were the financial leader of the 1990s uh, in the wrestling in the Japanese wrestling scene, and uh, probably the number two company in the uh, sorry number three company in the world itself. New Japan Pro Wrestling had some insane buy rates, ticket sales, etc. In the 1990s, so. Um, I'd uh, I'd like to see some people's opinion on what the Big Five of New Japan Pro Wrestling was in the 1990s. To share my thoughts, uh, in no particular specific order, uh, my personal favorite five of the 1990s in New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, were three of which I suppose can't really be excluded from this list, I guess. You know, the Three Musketeers, um, Hashimoto Shinya, Muto Keiji, and Chono Masahiro. Um, these three obviously being three very successful standard setting individuals for New Japan Pro Wrestling but there are so there there are so many other individuals in New Japan Pro Wrestling during the 1990s uh men who also flourished uh you know their uh, men who also furthered that success uh during the you know the O's and the 10s etc um you know guys like uh Hase Hiroshi, Sasaki Kensuke, Tenzan Hiroshi um, Satoshi, uh, Kojima Satoshi, um, you know, guys like this, uh, g um, guys such as that, uh, Nagata Yuji, uh, if I forgot him, once again, sorry guys, haven't slept last night, um, these guys, uh, when talking about the, uh, the greats of the two big organizations, uh, you know, New Japan, people usually cite the three musketeers of New Japan Pro Wrestling, and the, the big five, or for for all Japan Pro Wrestling, and uh, I just like to see what people's opinion is on what would be the definitive Big Five for New Japan Pro Wrestling. I think this is a bit of a fun challenge. I'd like it to be fun for um, more people. So 
you know, I'll tag the hell out of this, and uh, hopefully this will get a, a good amount of views. I think this is pretty fun. This is uh, not intended to start any arguments. It's, you know, simply for people's entertainment. Uh, my so my personal five uh, would be uh, I'll try and I'll try and order them in number. Um, these are people not necessarily based. This is not based on popularity. This is based on, in my opinion, uh, essentially who my favorite, my five favorite guys are to watch. You know, and uh, these are all obviously hardworking guys who did who did and can can and did pardon me draw audience. So um, uh, now, unfortunately. I am somewhat, my, at least my choices are somewhat limited to weight. If I wasn't going to limit this to weight, I would include uh, some juniors for the 1990s, obviously, um, for the New Japan Pro Wrestling, because in my opinion, New Japan Pro Wrestling had a deeper pool of talent. That's just my opinion. Uh, whereas All Japan relied on its big golden figures, you know, Misawa, Gobashi, Gawara, Tawe, Akiyama, Takeyama, uh, Omori, uh, well, to you know, to lesser extents, uh, Fuchi, Mamoto, uh, Momota, sorry, um, and uh, some guys coming in uh, towards the end, like you know, the young Marufuji, uh, Morishima, etc. These guys came in later. You know, <laughs> sorry for not mentioning Ogawa, uh, not my cup of tea. Um, but uh, I, all Japan pro wrestling definitely relied on a very different marketing strategy. Um, uh, I think this is kind of how giant uh, Baba uh, Baba San uh, wanted it to be, um, but uh, I feel New Japan Pro Wrestling obviously had you know a couple golden figures as well, a couple the big draws, um, but New Japan Pro Wrestling had a really deep pool of talent. So let me quickly go over that again. For so for all Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, Misawa, Kobashi, Kawada, Taoe, Akiyama, Takeyama, Omori. Uh, you know, uh, and, uh, okay, fine, let's add Ogawa, because, <laughs> you know, Ogawa was on the Untouchables, and that was a fair draw, uh, and, uh, trust me, I'm not attempting to leave anyone out here, I'm just saying, you know, the bigger draws that were fairly consistently there, uh, um, and, uh, for New Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, so we got Hashimoto Shinya, Muto Keiji, Masahiro Chono, Nagata Yuji, uh, Hase Hiroshi, we've got uh, Tenzan Hiroyoshi, we've got uh, Kojima Satoshi, so we're pretty much equal in the numbers here, and then you, you have to look at the junior division, I mean, come on, you've got Kanemoto Koji, who, you know, often would stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the heavyweights, you've got uh, Tanaka Minoru, which in my opinion has got to be one of the most naturally talented uh, junior heavyweights ever. Just my opinion. You've got you've had Wild Pegasus Chris Benoit. You've seen, um, pardon me. Uh, we've seen El Samurai Jushin Thunder Liger, um, Otani Shinjiro Takaiwa Tatsuhito. I mean the list goes on. Uh, just a really really deep pool of talent in New Japan Pro Wrestling, and pretty much all the guys that I just mentioned did have some drawing power to them. Uh, Sasaki. Oh, I miss Sasaki Kensuke. Shame on me. Um, and of course, New Japan, uh, New Japan's financial success definitely, uh, did really rack up w with the foreign talent that they included. They, uh, they had, uh, you know, All Japan Pro Wrestling did use, uh, Vader and Stan Hansen, uh, in the, sorry, Stan Hansen and Steve Williams, uh, in the earlier part of the 90s, and, uh, Vader actually became, uh, Triple Crown Champion towards the mid and end of, uh, Actually, he's one of the last Triple Crown champions of the late All Japan era before the exodus. So yeah, the All Japan Pro Wrestling, it's, they were definitely not... Um, they were definitely not... Uh, they, they definitely did draw upon the, the drawing power of Gaijin. But I think uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling definitely did this better. I mean, you know, at one point bringing in Hulk Hogan, they brought in Ric Flair. These are not things that... You know, Ric Flair was used, I believe, in All Japan Pro Wrestling once, but that was in the 80s. They, they really effectively used, like I said, uh, Ric Flair, you know, New Japan, uh, Hulk Hogan. They did use Stan Hansen and uh, Vader. They had uh, Scott Norton. Um, they had uh, the Road Warriors or the Legion of Doom. They, you know, they formed the Power Warriors with uh, Sasaki Kensuke. I believe it was Hawk that performed the Power Warriors. Um, very strong uh, Gaijin representation in New Japan Pro Wrestling, and they marketed it so well. Um, and... Uh, you know, Muto Keiji uh, himself being like a double draw, really, uh, with the great Muta and uh, Muto Keiji. 
Um, so uh, I'm not uh, I'm not insinuating that New Japan gets lost in anyone's mind when uh, discussing 1990s excellence, but uh, I think uh, I think there's a prominence that's placed on the new the All Japan Big Five that uh, really should be you know equaled out towards New Japan Pro Wrestling. It's just my opinion. So um, leave it in the comments, make a video response, uh, whatever you please. Uh, leave the comments on my wall, I really don't care. Um, but uh, give me your New Japan Pro Wrestling Big Five. So I'm going to end the video by running down mine, uh, getting up there in time. Sorry guys, once again, uh, I will probably only shoot videos at improv, so bear with me here. So my five, I'll try and order this. Uh, we'll start at number five, my fifth one. And he's just a pleasure for me, he's just a pleasure to me to watch is Sasaki Kensuke. Um, my, uh, fourth, my, my fourth one would be Hase Hiroshi. Um, I would say Hase was my favorite in New Japan Pro Wrestling, but I will take into account, you know, drawing power popularity. And Hase, in all fairness, Hase did leave for All Japan Pro Wrestling in the later 90s, so I'll be fair with my marking there. Um, and then, of course, the other three being a Chono, Muto, and Hashimoto, in, in that order. Um, so, I love Chono's person. Uh, Chono, I don't enjoy Chono quite as much as Hase or Sasake, especially in present time. But uh, Chono's personality is just fantastic. I love him as a, a ground submission worker. You know, his G1, his G1 matches uh, were obviously really exciting. Uh, Mr. G1, Mr. August. <laughs> uh, and, you know, Muto Keiji and Hashimoto is completely self-explanatory. So, um, like I said, I'm not trying to leave anyone out here. Uh, you know, Nagata Yuji, even today, is still very strongly represented in New Japan Pro Wrestling itself. Kojima Satosh and uh, Tenzan Hiroyoshi, both also excellent. Excuse me. Um, and just a very, very deep pool, very deep pool of junior heavyweight talent um, that is not to be excluded. So uh, I won't drag this out any longer. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this. I'll likely shoot another video today. So um, yeah, comment, make a video response, etc. I can't wait to see it. Um, so, Matane. <laughs>